late season contests in this part of the country. Chili temps in the forecast here at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Arrowhead Stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was just about off the charts. They're set for football as the Chiefs get set to do battle with the Minnesota Vikings. Now a man who really came on late last year, it's Damian Williams. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Now more. It's complete to Williams. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. From the gun, Moore. And this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Colquitt on to kick as he sends it away. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. Minnesota taking over possession here on offense and wanted to revisit that game in Week 8. It was so odd, their victory over Washington, because they only scored 19 points, but they never punted. And <laughs> in fact, it's their first time in 15 years that they've gone through a game without punting, Charles. And Mike Zimmer, their head coach, was quoted after the game as saying he looked at the scoreboard midway through the fourth quarter and saw they put up over 400 yards of offense and Washington was down closer to 200. And he looked at the scoreboard again. He's like, 19 points? <laughs> that doesn't translate very well. You don't see that very often. But it was a game you never felt that Minnesota was in question, right? You never felt like there was any jeopardy for them. Defense held them down. Offense did what it needed to do. Now they get a little bit of a mini break. And now they get set for the big part of their schedule. Kansas City starts on Sunday. Yeah, at KC, you'll have that game. And then they go to Dallas. So a couple of tough ones coming up. Now on third down, an extra DB out there for the Chiefs. Let's go. Do you tighten up? Tighten up. Oh my God. They'll run it. Here's Cook. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. Chiefs take the field again here. You know, you've got their game coming up against Minnesota this week. Yeah, and, fired up. And that's at Arrowhead. Yes. And they've lost three straight at Arrowhead. That's could hard they, to believe. Could they lose four in a row at home? They potentially could, especially if Mahomes doesn't go in this game. And remember, Kansas City's weakness on defense. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Xavier Rhodes with a pick. Watkins, the intended receiver. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Following the interception, Cousins. And Diggs has it. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. By the way, how about the run that Diggs has been on? Three straight games of 140 or more receiving yards. Week six, seven, and eight. 167 yards, 142, and then 143, and wins over Philly, Detroit, and Washington. 
On play action, Cousins. Complete, it's Johnson. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. From four yards out, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. It's never fun for a defense to run on the field knowing that they're having to defend a short field. Just the idea of trying to limit an offense in that position, daunting for a defense. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And it's now a 7-0 game. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded at the six. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, Everyone has matchups that they like better than others. Where they think they have an advantage, dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. The defensive end, Daniil Hunter, drops it. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. They'll come up after the sack on a second and 12. More now. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll make it third and 13. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish. Try to get it to Williams, but it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Delvin Cook, 28 yards. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments, let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking, beats good tackling on that play. End result, touchdown. Bailey got the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. 
Is fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Back to the air on second down. Moore looking left sideline incomplete. Sammy Watkins, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Charles, he doesn't seem to be particularly in tune with his receivers, just two for seven throwing the football, but he did seem really locked in before the game. Yeah, and that has to do with receivers sometimes. Sometimes the defenders knock them off their route. And you're usually pretty precise. One, two, three, cut, balls out of his hands to the receiver. In this case, might be off by a half step either way. They've got to find a way to get back in sync. He's got it to Williams. The ball comes out, and the Vikings pick up the football. There he goes, right side. And they are going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return, a scoop and score for the Vikings. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And it's now 21 to nothing. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And the Chiefs now getting set to go. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I left, is still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. Ben Gideon in on the stop. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping... Those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, it's McCoy. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. It's a pickup of 17 in the first down. Couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. So after the run by McCoy, here's another first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Making the stop there, Daniil Hunter. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's a second and seven. 
And this is caught by Watkins. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield <laughs> running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. This is caught by Robinson. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 28. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Go now. 70, Indy. 54, 54. Get it. Come. To throw is Moore. Off the play fake. He's going to let it go deep for the ends. And that is caught by Watkins for a chief touchdown. Sammy Watkins. 28 yards as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Well, since we don't have a rooting interest in this one, neither one of us wanted to see this one get out of hand too early. Here we are in the first quarter. That was an important response for them to score already down 21. Harrison Butker is on for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and that'll cut the lead to 21-7. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. A good start to the drive. Here's that's caught out on the left side. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Cousins going to come up on a first and 10. And he's a perfect 5 for 5 here to begin the game. Cousins gives way to Cook. And this winds up a gain of 4 to the 41. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Uh, give to Cook out of the gun. And able to work about five yards out of this as he's taken down up near the 47. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. On third and one, here's Cousins. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. 
down. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Cousins to his tight end, Rudolph, for a Viking first down. A pretty sizable deficit here in the first quarter. This defense uh, probably need to get off the field in those situations on third down. And you and I both know in this huddle before that last third down play, that's exactly what they talked about. Let's make a play. Let's get off the field. Let's reverse the momentum. Instead, they get hit with another first down, almost back to the drawing board. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Cousins throw complete to Thielen. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man. Maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. On first down, Cook. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. A pretty wild first quarter. 21-7, our score. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a second and one coming up. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. On the ground, it's Cook. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. From the gun, here's Cousins. And this one hauled in by Rudolph. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Second and goal from inside the five. Now a run with Cook. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. They come out here in the eye. So it's third and goal now, and this is where the Arrowhead crowd can make it very tough. Cook. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. Oh, but this is going to backfire as it's intercepted. Picked off by Morris Claiborne. They begin the drive with Williams. Well, that gives them a little room, but not much. A gain of two to the five. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room that if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Not today, Ron. Not today. Shoot, shoot. This one out quickly to Watkins. And he'll take this one up to about the six-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. The Chiefs on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They can use a conversion. This is third and seven. Looking to throw. Moore gets this one to Hill. Well, they convert on third with a gain of 22. Let's go, let's go. 
Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. You don't want none, baby. You don't want none. Now a play fake here on first down. Wide open is Watkins. He's got him. And a loose football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. If this defense wants to stay in this ballgame, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try and make some plays in their backfield. Looking to throw on second down. Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. Dalvin Cook is running back the intended target. And now it's third down. Defensively, celebration time because they finally forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now, and that's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. On third down, Cousins. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about. Get the ball and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right. A lost opportunity. The Chiefs bring pressure and they block it. And they'll wind up taking over there in their own territory inside the 40. Uh, so much for pinning him really deep. Short punt could have pinned him inside the 10. Now Grayfield position the other way. It's never good when you're punting the ball and your eyes see the ball go back behind you. <laughs> now, however form, whether it's over your head or to the side, never good. Now it becomes a race to get to the football so they don't pick it up and take it all the way. So line of scrimmage, still a 39 on second and 10. Now more. Off play action. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Back to throw. More. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Anthony Harris. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at the 40. Now throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That one goes for 24 yards. Cousins now. Only one pass has hit the ground for him. 10 of 11 thus far. It's first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Johnson was the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. I got you, punt. They go play action. Cousins. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. From the corner, it was Kendall Fuller with a sack. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Third and long for Cousins. And this is Cook with a grab. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. So 
So Cousins heads to the Vikings sideline and on is Dan Bailey to try the field goal. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And that will extend their lead even further. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And out come the Chiefs now. And three interceptions in this game. And I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, and what's interesting is, what do the coaches decide to do now? Hey, Having thrown one, three, one, two, do you alter your offensive strategy? Two. Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. A loss of two there, second down. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. Off the draw, here's Williams. Eight yards on the run, and that cuts us down to a third and about five. Well, with Damian Williams, it's notable that the Chiefs didn't make a play to go after a big-time running back in the offseason. The coaching staff said back in May they didn't want running back by committee. They trusted Williams to be their starter. You remember last year, he was forced into the starting role the final three games of the season due to attrition, and he really excelled. And then he was excellent in the playoffs against the Colts and Patriots. Strong indicator that he was ready to be the bell cow. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Well, it's looking like another three and out here, and at some point, got to be able to put together a drive to keep your defense from having to go right back out on the field. I feel like things are starting to unravel a little bit. We're not even at halftime. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. I got it. On second down, Cook. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The Vikings on third down. Just one for five to this point. Here it's third and three. Now Cook. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. It's a first down following a gain of three. Each team has its own terminology. Some people call it jumbo, some call it monster, some call it king. But it doesn't really matter. They brought in the big lumber to pick up that first down. Yeah, you think about goal line defense with the goal line offense that time getting it done. Off the play fake, Cousins. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And now it's second down. 
By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, and we're not talking about our on air commentary here. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well, and he didn't get that done on that play. Cousins from the gun on third. And that will be incomplete as well. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. And now here comes Kansas City. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Now Moore over the middle. He's got Watkins. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 16 yards, a first down been a very one-sided game so far they got to change what they're doing right now don't they you can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment no you can't because if you're doing it right you're adjusting from series to series and they need a big adjustment here to try and put some points on the board a first down run not going to get them a whole lot maybe a yard yeah it looks like just one yard there so that'll bring up second and nine Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. More now from the gun, he'll throw. And he's going to drop this off to Williams, complete. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Here's Moore on first and 10. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been 7-on-7 seven seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Moore throwing again. It's Kelsey on the ground. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 35. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. To throw is more on first down. That one complete to Hill. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. The Chiefs will use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Operating from the gun. Moore. 
This is caught. Watkins. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Second and goal from inside the five. More now. Yeah, he's got it. That time the completion goes for four yards and we're set up with a third and goal. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it. And McCoy is in for a Kansas City touchdown. LaShawn McCoy taking it in. And the Chiefs are able to draw a bit closer. And that's a critical touchdown. I don't want to be too hyperbolic or whatever, but they needed some points on the board before halftime. They certainly did, and, you know, it's not going to race everything that happened in the first half. Look, they got outplayed. There's no question about that. But now it gives them a chance to regroup, feel a little bit better about themselves. And how many games have we done where we've seen everything flip when another half begins. And by the way, did you say hyperbolic? I did, I did. Well, thank you. After the field goal, here's Butker to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is the wise play because if you think about trying to fool them here, Here's what you're facing. You're facing a loosened up secondary, playing a lot deeper than normal. So even if you run some type of misdirection, you're only gonna fool them for a second or so. And guess what? They're so deep, they're really not gonna be out of position. Take the knee, get to the locker room. And yeah, he's gonna get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two touchdown game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They had a big first half. Now they have a chance to add to that lead here in the opening possession of the second half. And everyone always asks about halftime adjustments, kind of the key phrase. What did you do at halftime? Well, the way they ran offense in the first half, I think they were very calm, congratulatory, but also what they were saying is, don't expect them to be the same on defense. They'll be the ones making the adjustments. Let's see what they do, and we'll attack accordingly. And we'll see how they attack here. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now. From the 27, Cousins, and that gonna be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? It creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. He sets to fire deep. 
And that will be incomplete. Rashad Breeland there defensively and able to knock that one down to the ground. So it looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Here's Britton Colquitt now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Ready? AQ Gator. Mike 54. And we heavy on the edges. Heavy on the edges. Check this down. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. Oh, and this is going to wind up a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt, and if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. Taking it about the 16. Good work, now the Let's Minnesota go. offense Let's set go. to take over again. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. The linebacker, Anthony Hitchens, there on the stop. With that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. No no no. On play action, Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. On first and ten, Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. It's a gain of 16, and the Vikings have the first down as well. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. He was able to escape momentarily in the backfield, but you could just kind of tell that wasn't going anywhere. You know, in the film session, he'll get a minus for not getting him on the ground by himself. But what the coach is really going to analyze, how fast did his teammates get there to help him? If one guy slows him up, everyone else better be there. And that's what they got on that play. Here's a quick hitch route and the throw complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. A nice first down pickup on a gain of six. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Let's go hard. Number 53, Mike 53. They run again on first down. Cook. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. 
A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Bring it! Bring it! A first run for the backup, Abdullah. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Our defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will make this now a 19-point advantage. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Now the Chiefs offense, they get ready to head on the field. And last time they surrendered to safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. Here a throw taken in by Watkins. Sammy Watkins, he's going to go. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Sammy Watkins. 76 yards, and the Chiefs are able to cut into this lead. Well, if they're going to make a game of this in the second half, they need a few big plays to go their way. That's one. And the way to get it done is to also conserve time. So to your point, that big play right there, now you're not moving the ball downfield, taking time off the clock. You're leaving yourself a better avenue to continue to try and make a comeback. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point. The kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Super tough. And they'll get this well past we midfield we before being stopped just before the 35. 39 yards there, a big one. 
This is a little bit like baseball here. Strong up the middle. Both sides want to be that. In this case, the offense ended up winning the ultimate battle. And those big runs between the tackles, that's a little deflating for a defense, isn't it? It really is because that's where your strength's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a spot where they can't make that yardage there. You're supposed to send them outside. Not in this case. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Well, the offense has had a big day. He's been great running the football, but I don't think anybody liked that last result. No, they didn't like the last result at all, but they have to look at it in total, don't they? They've had a big day running the football. You take an occasional loss or an occasional bad play along the way, but all in all, they have to like what they've done. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Throwing. Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Cousins now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. It's complete to Diggs. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Hey, come on out here. Come get some. Come get some. Back to the ground. Cook. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. A gain of five. Good enough for the first down. The running game's played a huge part in getting him down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving. Keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone. Keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. Go. From the gun, here's Cousins. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A five-yard touchdown. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is taken at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. And they are going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return. A scoop and score for the Vikings. 
Huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Bailey got the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it, but you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it, and that's what you don't want to do. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams, and they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. The tackle made there by Linval Joseph. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Now a throw for the all-pro Kelsey is complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. They'll try and run for it with McCoy. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Now more off the play fake. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Eric Kendricks, the Vikings' leading tackler a season ago, in on the stop. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram Go his down. way forward and get what he can. 54. Mike, 54. Watch the run, watch the run. <laughs> to throw on third down. Moore going deep here for Watkins. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. I guess they figure with a guy who is that hot downfield, who knows how to get the ball into the end zone, you throw it up and give him every opportunity, even though that one fell incomplete. Yeah, he's already been in the end zone multiple times, tried to target him again deep there, but unsuccessful. Amazing, perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. 
And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. He's having a big game running the football, but that one will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? Throwing on second down. Cousins. Complete. Smith has it. And they'll mark him down right around the nine, just shy of the ten. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's get it. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Let's set a tone, fellas. Let's set a tone. Play fake. Cousins. And he's going to be taken down. They sack him. On what will be the final play of quarter number three. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he's able to get it out of there. Fielded at the 43. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Chiefs will have excellent field position here as they take over. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, some, hey, listen, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Here's a second and seven. And that one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football here. Nearly a fourth pick. And it's third down. Just nothing there again. He's been sacked multiple times. We've seen the interceptions, of course. Uh, he's really been through the ringer, hasn't he? And what we've seen is a defense that's well-coordinated. The front and the back really in sync. The front putting on the pressure. The backside being ball hawks and picking passes off. And this is caught by Watkins. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. An 11-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Chiefs first down. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, and people got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Travis Kelsey, the all-pro tight end, the intended receiver. But now it's third down. At this point, down big. You'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Kill, kill, kill. Let's go. More now. Throwing on fourth down. And this is going to be incomplete. Andy Reid went for it, but it won't pan out. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. 
So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. They start the drive with Cook, and he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Again, it's Cook. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be third and ten now. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. On the carry, it's Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. So now here are the Chiefs as their offense makes their way back out onto the field. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory, but the other guys held up. <laughs> they didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold it. But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. <laughs> we'll see what his offense can do. And now here comes Kansas City. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series. And because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good. But when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. Ready, ready. Four yards on that Eight, last three, completion, so that sets up second and six. Second and six. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player? Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Here's more to throw on third down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Everson Griffin on the sack, taken to the fourth round back in 2010. What a steal. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. He's going to look deep for Watkins. And that'll be intercepted by the Pro Bowl safety, Harrison Smith. And he'll bring it all the way back, just a yard or two shy of midfield. He was looking for Watkins that time. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop him a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. 
Another good run for him. What else is new? That'll put him right at 150 yards for the game. So he's really made his presence felt in this one. The hunt. Where's the hunt, hunt? What is he? Watch the curl. Watch the curl. Watch the curl. The hunt. They're going to run the jet sweep on third down. And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Not your conventional play call, but that's okay. You probe the defense a little bit with some of everything in your playbook. That way they have to account for everything as the game moves on. Colquitt on to kick as he sends it away. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is. At the six-yard line. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now, it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And they'll get him down up past the 15. That one good for 12 yards in a Kansas City first. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch route. The completion good for three and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Looking to throw. Moore, complete, the tight end, Kelsey. The reception, good for seven. It's third down. Obviously, this has not been a banner game, throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. The interception, last drive there. He hits the reliable target. Moore from the gun on third down. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage, too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. This is taken at the 18. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. We've got a lopsided game here. I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, <laughs> we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second. Let me, let me thumb to the proper page on that. Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance, where they took control of this game, how they've managed to keep control of this game, and then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. In a lopsided blowout, the roads are usually open. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Anthony Hitchens, second in the AFC in tackles last year, there to bring him down. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 12 yards there, first down, Vikings. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield. 
for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They run, Cook. And he'll take it across the 50 and into Chief territory. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. They run it again with Cook. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. You think you're going to get this? They'll run on first down. It's Cook, and he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Brandon, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Kansas City, so long, everybody.